not only with line staff but also with administrative staff as well. Uh, it is something, of course, that is no secret. Uh, it's been uh, well well understood by myself and the council since long before I came. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, the staff that has been here and has remained here for uh, a long period of time uh, knows the great value that we get uh, through our employment here. I don't just say that uh, to be saying it. I really, truly mean it. Um, we have a good staff here that wants to work and that wants to be here because they believe in the city and, and in what we're doing. That being said, it's always nice to be able to get compensated uh, with an amount that is approaching market rate. Uh, and having said that, uh, our employees have, have worked at below market for, for quite a long period of time. Well, we haven't been able to do anything about that for a long period of time. Um, quite frankly, right after I came, the economy tanked in 2008, and uh, revenue dropped off, but um, through the perseverance and hard work of this council and uh, through the hard work of the staff, uh, as well as uh, close monitoring of the budget. We did not have to lay off one individual during the period of the recession. Uh, we were able to continually grant cost of living allocation during that period of time. Uh, it did not begin to offset the, uh, the market disparity, but it did at least provide a little bit of a bump for the employees during that time, of which I, I know the staff has been very grateful for uh, and the department has been attested to. That being said, when times become plentiful again, uh, it, it bears re-examination. And that, in fact, is what uh, occurred about two years ago uh, when, uh, when the mayor came on uh, in his current capacity. He instructed me to look at this issue again. And uh, we looked at historical data. We looked at the salary studies that had been done by professional staff from the Carl Vincent Institute of Government. We determined that it was not necessarily feasible to retain Carl Benson again for re-examination. We had already paid for one study to be done and for it to be updated again since then. And of course, it had been since last uh, to, uh, to its outdated status when we looked at it uh, a couple of years ago. So the mayor instructed me to look at data that is readily available for everybody, and I included it in your packets through the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. BCA puts out a wage and salary survey that it does of almost every classification position for uh, all municipal staff and county staff as well. Uh, and it aggregates it in the form of areas. Public safety is one, public works is another, administration is another, and it then groups that data in terms of city signs. So, uh, for example, if you were an employee uh, who worked for the city as a custodian, your salary uh, for a city the size of Ahira might not necessarily be the same for a city the size of Valdosta. Well, you can uh, grade that example on up to the larger cities of Valdosta, just as you can for Ahira. So what I did is I put that data in uh, your packets and you've got the different cities that have responded, of which there are over 150, I believe, that responded. And there are several different sampling groups within those various sizes. Ours was size E. So when I looked at that, I looked at the way they provided the data. And uh, that data most often started out with an average entry level wage a maximum entry level wage for, again, cities our size, based on that sampling data, and then look at a maximum average wage and a median average wage for uh, a long tenure employee. So what I basically did uh, when we looked at this last year is I took uh, a, a middle starting point, I took average entry level wage, and I took maximum entry level wage, and I sort of tried to split the difference and, and come up with the medium, which honestly does not put employees completely at market, but it does bring them far, far closer than, um, than they've ever been before to, uh, to being at market and provides an affordable middle ground, at least, in, in our estimation. Um, we did that in phase one with the public works, or excuse me, with the line uh, police department employees last year. 
That was done, I believe, in August, September of 2015. We did not do the officer level and above, or, or the, uh, the court rules, the lieutenants, and, and et cetera. Um, we then went, and the council approved that last year. We then went back and we looked at public works earlier this year. We did a, uh, a recommended increase for everyone, save department head level, uh, and that was approved in May of this year. Phase three is to uh, review public safety administration uh, idea uh, and not just do the line staff, which honestly was due for another increase, but look at uh, the officer level, the, uh, the corporals, the lieutenants and such for public safety uh, and create a different calculation there in addition to administrative staff. So the only thing beyond this current phase that remains is the department heads. And that of course should council want to be uh, entertained to look at, I can do for preparation uh, in either August or September. This is recommended before you tonight for public safety and administration in lieu of the annual cost of living allocation of 3%. Um, so we don't have to consider that. That's not necessarily on the table for this year uh, since we haven't been able to do adjustments in that area. They are itemized for you in the uh, graphical representation. And I can entertain any questions that you may have uh, for specific amounts or as like. I will just offer by way of explanation um, that when I uh, arrived at these calculations based again on the DCA numbers, I talked with the mayor about it first and, and then I went to each individual department head and uh, talked with the department heads as well to see because they have a feel for their own uh, area of expertise, what average level salary wages for their line staff should be. Uh, I, I secured approval from uh, Chief Davis as well as Chief Bennett, uh, and of course the admin staff is, is under my purview as well. Um, so, uh, and the mayor, uh, the mayor looked at it and uh, approved it as well. So we're bringing it before you tonight to, to see what you think. The only other question uh, that I might point out uh, before uh, y'all take it over, if you have any for me, is that there are a couple of lack areas on the public safety and admin, and that is because of the PRN nature of how the um, uh, fire department funds its staff. That's part-time as needed. There is a block amount and a certain number of hours that the staff draws from, specifically 9,000 shift hours. One of the current budget, that's $105,750. Based on uh, the rank and file hourly wage increases, that amount would increase by approximately $20,000 to $125,000, $141,000. And here again, that 9,000 figure doesn't change, they're just receiving a higher hourly wage. The hourly wages of the employees above it are slightly depressed because of the nature of their uh, full-time status. We didn't have to worry about that a few years ago, but now we have full-time employees. And if you look at their annual wage, it is comparable to what other employees are receiving from an annual compensation standpoint. It's just that they work more hours based upon the specialized nature of their profession. So um, I'll entertain any questions you may have. Uh, the total cost uh, is $92,536 for the implementation of this. Uh, and we obviously will realize um, the full implementation next year, about approximately half of it this year should you approve. And obviously you will have a thoroughly vetted budget document for FY17 that will have all of this in it, in addition to uh, future recommendations as well. So you can uh, entertain that in budget workshops in August and September. So we'll entertain any questions you may have. The number 92 at the bottom of the spreadsheet, $92,536. Yes, sir. That's for 2016, the remainder of 2016. That is that is annual cost. Annual cost. Yes, sir. So so probably approximately half of that would be the impact to the FY16 budget. So about $46,000. Again, this would be, uh, of course, take care of legally in the general fund. Yes, sir. Um, and, and what I have talked with the council about at the retreat, as well as uh, subsequent meetings when we talked, 
that unappropriated surplus uh, that we have this year, I've already talked with, account with uh, the accountants and informed them that uh, expenditures of, of annual revenue will um, will not equal uh, annual, uh, excuse me, the expenditures this year will not equal the annual revenue that increases into the general fund. We will have to augment that with unappropriated surplus. So that's fund balance. And the fund balance is approximately $900,000 and has accumulated over the past several years. We do expect equalization of that. I mean, it's not a permanent thing that's going to occur, but equalization probably within the next 24 to 36 months. And in that time, we'll spend down some of the fund balance to be able to, uh, to bring it to, to equalization. You have a figure on hand that are the difference between that fund balance from 2015 to what's estimated in 2016? I can pull it up. Because that $900,000 figure you mentioned includes the previous fund balance from previous years. Correct. 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 That's right. Um, it's under retreats. And I believe I know what that figure is. I just want, I just want to verify that. Why don't you give yours first? Five hundred thousand from from before. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, Five hundred thousand dollars. But uh, the annual the annual surplus was in the neighborhood of two hundred thousand dollars. And as in the black, uh, obviously we won't realize that uh, if we realize all of the increases. But uh, unappropriated surplus will will augment as well. And. Uh, Liquid cash position at the end of 2015 was $650,000. The end of 2014 was $500,000. So approximately $150,000 to $200,000 is what that's been building up to every year. And now I think the latest fund balance figure was around $850,000 or $900,000. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
you do have that type of fund balance, you do have that opportunity to show them their appreciation. And I'm not just going to stop there. I, I sat in on the, uh, on the retirement and benefits class in Savannah, and that's something that we can pick up as well. Uh, if you got somebody that's going to dedicate 5, 10, 15, 20 years of their life to you, and you know what you have, why shouldn't you take care of that's, that's your obligation. And so with the city being in a position to do it, I think it's no more than fair. I mean, it's, it, it, it would be, it would be a, a travesty not to. Um, I heard you mention the cost of living. I've never had an issue with the cost of living. This raise does not offset that cost of living. That needs to be done as well. And that brings us up to a platform where we're not catching a 20 year, 15 year gap. We have a, instead of standing at a very progress on this is another one of those issues that I jumped and said a few months ago all the studies, all the information, all the cities around you, you get the countdown from 10 gets down to you, call it everything. It's another, another issue. Same thing. Our, our employees in the service, they showed you their dedication. I mean, rarely do we have a few under five years. Everybody's long term. So I think it's our obligation. They dedicated their, they showed their commitment to the city. It's time for the city to show their commitment. I know we, we have, uh, we're addressing the employees, uh, the city manager, and the department heads being looked at as well. I can tell you it's probably been eight to ten years from now. And I've never heard anyone on the right or complain about the job that they do because they can't do it. You don't have to convince me anything. <laughs> so I'm going to have to a lot. Um, our people don't make enough money. I've looked at the numbers and, and they need to be adjusted. I'm in full agreement. I did talk with Councilman Warfield. Uh, he, he does uh, sincerely offer his regrets for not being here. He had an unavoidable scheduling conflict this week. Uh, but uh, he indicated to me he had looked at it and, and uh, you know, obviously looked at the work and, and the research. and said he did not have any issue with, with the council's decision. I'll just say I, I agree with you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Councilman Warren. Uh, I think that I think one thing that there should be said is that it's absolutely true and I agree that we have a great group of people working at Hay Hour and they absolutely do deserve it. But it's not just that not just coming up with money that in, in order to compensate good fellows and good girls, good gals. This also stems from a very long time of uh, salaries falling behind for similar uh, work done in similar towns and similar uh, projects, doing, doing similar things all over the southeast. And this would get us closer to that average salary for these particular uh, jobs as they are paid in other towns. And that's, and that's really, if we pass this, all we're doing. And I think it's, uh, if that's the least we can do, I agree with it. I'm going to say one thing on the show. <laughs> um, if you really want to see the sticker shop, wait till you have some place for me to jump. And I, I, I'm not saying that. But if you had to place one of them, you wouldn't be able to track most people in the South. You would definitely have to move We're here because we want to be here. Am I speaking at a turn, guys? I agree. That's it. So we can just stop going. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. All right, any more questions for the city manager? All right.
Let's move on down to the most important thing tonight. Courthouse okay. air conditioning. Don't need to say much. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> but that's the price of the uh, cooling system there. That's the price. 